Good afternoon, Pastor David. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a great afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Uh, the New Year's kicked off. It sure did. And uh, we're, we're in a season now to see what, what's going to happen in, in, as we move forward. And, you know, I've been thinking about some of your latest sermons. and, and uh, That's good. <laughs> least... That's somebody is, right? <laughs> but I wanted to ask you what the earmark of carnality is in the church. <laughs> um, I can tell you in 1 Corinthians 3, I can tell you that uh, the Apostle Paul tells us what what um, our components to, to carnality. Um, in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3, he says, uh, it's envy, strife, and division. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, uh, I, where, where there is envy, strife, and division, is, is that not, he said, uh, basically, a sign of carnality. And then he went on to speak concerning what that division was over. And he says, because some of you are saying that I'm of, of uh, Paul or I'm of Cephas or I'm of Christ. You know, you're, you're basically dividing the body of Christ into uh, loyalties that are, um, are causing the strife and, and causing the division. And so he says, when you do that, he, he said, are ye not carnal? Are ye not mere men? In other words, are you not living in a fleshly way using fleshly measurements pertaining to that which would seem to make up or be components of spiritual maturity? And, and when you begin to uh, divide over, I'm a follower of this or I'm a follower of that, he said, then what you've done is you've put yourself in a position of... Um, elevating a man to a place that he really ought not to be. So I think in the church today, we have to be careful of what we find ourselves being proud of. I think that it's, it's not a sign of carnality to identify with a, a local congregation. And it's not a sign of carnality to be loyal to the doctrinal um, makeup of that fellowship, as long as those things that are are held most firmly are theologically orthodox. And yes, there is a theological orthodoxy. Yes, the church, church councils over the centuries have uh, very studiously and vigorously worked out, hammered out things that we must essentially believe in order to be a member of the body of Christ. Things that relate to the scriptures and their inerrancy or the second coming of Jesus and and the power of the Holy Spirit and things of that nature. There are essentials to the faith and then there are things that are non-essentials, you know. The essential to the faith is believing in Christ. To be born again, that's an essential of the faith. Uh, a non-essential may be what time do I start church services or what is the order of service. So if the doctrine is solid and Jesus is central and, and everything is, you know, is orthodox, then okay, be a Baptist or uh, be a Foursquare or whatever it may be, whatever club you identify with, you know, that's fine. They call them tribes today, but whatever club you may belong to, you know, as long as it's Orthodox, I've got no problem or beef with you. But if you belong to an organization that, um, that says that Jesus Christ is the first creation of God or that, mm -hmm. that he uh, appeared on the... Uh, American continent or whatever, you know, that is, that is heresy and that is a mark of a cult. And so there are differences and we need to be aware of those differences. But what is a mark of carnality today? I think strife, division, and uh, that's, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big one today. And, and what would be the danger or a church that is, or any your mark of carnality, what is the result of that? Is it uh destruction would it would it be it disrupts the unity of the body of Christ we have to be um, unitized on a single awareness and that is who Jesus Christ is and so when I take my my uh, particular church and say that this is the church that has all the truth and there's nobody else who has it completely as we do um, I, I think that's going to create a real problem and so 
the uh, again the earmark is 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 breaking unity. Mm-hmm. You know that's the earmark of of carnality. Well, Pastor David, thank you so much on sharing on that. Just want to remind our church family that we have uh, Wednesday evening services tomorrow yeah, at seven p.m. And you're starting a new book. I'm going to start the book of Ephesians, and we're going to be looking at the blessings, uh, introduction to the blessings that every believer has in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, I'll be sharing about about how some of us live as spiritual paupers. We honestly don't realize what we have in Christ. And today, there are a lot of Christians who live less than what God would have them to live. They, they do. They just... They live in a manner that is, is it, it, it makes the gospel appear to be just a myth, myth, myths and stories. I mm. mean, you know, they're saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, but they live exactly like the world. I mean, I see Christians driving around with their masks on too, you know, <laughs> and it's just odd. We, we, we live like, like the world. And, uh, you know, now someone's going to get hurt feelings because I said that, but you know what? Suck it up. <laughs> Our identity in Christ or who we are in Christ, our position in Christ. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Well, thank you again, Pastor. I want to invite your friends and family to come on out to join us on Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. as Pastor David starts the book of Ephesians. And then we have our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. We look forward to you guys coming out and joining us. And Pastor David, again, thank you and God bless you. All right. We'll see you guys.